Hey guys, here's just a reminder. Um, I do have other content other than wrestling. Um, this is my other channel, uh, as you can see. I I've tried so many different names for for uh, for, for this channel. Uh, start off as Green Party and Socials News, Green Party News, stuff of that nature. And that's why you see like Slack, uh, Slack Network presents and other things like that. Uh, now it's basically just I, I'm trying to ex explanation in regards to this basically is um, I feel I feel now Green Party uh, National Party is a is just as corrupt as the Democrats and Republicans. Uh, a lot more things are coming out in regards to Republicans that have been proven right, but I'm not a Republican and I'm not a Democrat. I am a socialist by policy, by, by socialist by policy, and it seems like majority of the socialist uh, political party parties uh, in the United States are in some way connected with the DNC in some way, and I don't want to be involved in that. So. The only thing I can suggest to you, if you're an, an independent or anybody else, just my own opinion, I'm going to be doing it myself. I don't, I'm not. I'm not saying you should, but I'm not going to vote. Um, I I've never donated to uh to any political party in the first place. We never been. I've never been officially a part of any of any political party. Um, anyway, my point being is, if you don't want the parties the two party system to dictate what you who and what you vote for you either you either work to get open uh, open primaries in in your state uh and uh rank choice paper ballot uh uh voting or don't vote period because i'm sorry but the only time they come around Wanting to do what you want them to do is when they need your vote, and they've done this for forty plus years. So I'm not saying you shouldn't, but I'm saying that if you want to change, consider it. As far as the non-voting part and working on you know, open primaries and working on getting um, open, uh, uh, ranked choice paper ballots, because there's a difference between paper ballots and machine ballot and, and machine voting. Machine voting can be easily hacked, supposedly hacked. And easily manipulated, whereas in paper ballots, there's a paper trail. So, anyway, that's why I do. That's why I got to say, as far as that part goes, otherwise, this, I'm trying to turn this channel into uh, talking monetary theory. So that's why you see majority of the stuff on here is about MMT. Um, anyway, so uh, please give give the, give this channel a try. If you like the content on there that I continuously put up there, then subscribe. Uh, if you want to donate, you can go you can go to paypal.me slash uh, capital leftist, capital GAP network, and uh, donate what you want as far as that part goes, or go to this website, uh, check out my content, uh, all into this content, um, and subscribe, share, like, and yeah. Anyway. Right back. Hey, welcome to Monday's show. This is uh, March, March, uh, April fourth. Yeah, April fourth. There we go. Uh, January, March, April. <laughs> anyway, see, so, yeah, April fourth. Uh, I wanted to kind of do something that I hadn't done yet. And that is basically this is from as you can see the uh, real progressives. Uh, if not here, right now, you know, real, real progressives, uh, a quality. Um, if you, I mean, if you're not uh, up to, if you're not following Warren Mosler, uh, Stephanie Kelton, uh, if you're not following Mike Norman, or the next best thing, uh, and a prominent. Uh, a knowledgeable website and organization to learn modern monetary theory from it would be real progressives. Uh, they interview countless uh, uh, experts in, in uh, modern monetary theory, ask all kinds of questions. Uh, 
make anybody who is watching or listening to them more knowledgeable, uh, make them think and make them learn a lot about uh, modern monetary theory. Um, Mike Norman, uh, he, he pretty much helps you, um, it, I think it's about Pitbull Economics. Uh, he basically helps you uh, learn how to trade uh, uh, using MMT as a lens to, to look at trading on everyday, on, on everyday uh, Wall Street and stuff of that nature. So, uh, you know, uh, check him out. Uh, none of which I'm, I'm getting endorsed by or anybody else like that. It, it's, MMT is a, is a quality um, lens to look through uh, as far as economics goes. If you look at what um, happened during the financial crisis, a lot of people that saw this coming either knew functional finance, uh, also uh, can, can see the writing on the wall, uh, MMTers, uh, quite a few of them actually uh, uh, got that right as early as 2001. Um, anyway, look all that up. Uh, but anyway, this is from the man himself, uh, Warren Mosler. And since I actually haven't uh, been able to get get the thought across to do like a small little video and put on my YouTube channel, um, I thought I would just go from here as as I'm real progresses as, as, you know, as you can see. But anyways, to see, uh, this is a more complex definition from a prominent MMT or uh, MMT economist. A more complex definition doesn't make the prior definition wrong. So let's see. And this, if you look at what ha was happening in Russia and what other, uh, what the IMF is about, uh, all of this will make sense if, if that if you're not already knowledge, uh, knowledgeable of of uh, the economy. If you if you're already not an economist or whatever else, you know that sort of thing. Uh, first uh, is uh, a sovereign country uh, it has the ability to issue its own currency exclusively. Uh, requires all taxes and related obligations to be uh, extinguished in that currency. Uh, can purchase anything that is for sale in that currency at any time and chooses without financial constraints. That includes all idle labor. Uh, its central bank sets the uh, the interest rates. The current uh, the currency floats. The uh, government does not borrow in any currency other than its own. This appears solid, but in fact is too wrong. Uh, another wrong, de de uh, another wrong definition. Uh, the big hole in this, and this is coming from the guy who actually, you know, brought it forward. Um, uh, a hole. In, okay, so is the external borrowing constraints item six in the list? If a government generally could purchase everything the currency needed in its own uh, wait, uh, country, excuse me, needed in its own currency, then it would indeed be monetarily sovereign. Now, uh, obviously, reading from this, and now we see the author's definition of MS or monetary sovereignty, claiming this is the right definition, extending the obscurity, absurd, absurdity. There we go. But no country is self-sufficient. All countries need imports. So item three on the list is a real uh, herring. Uh, let's see, uh, elements of the definition are red, uh, elements of a definition are red herrings. A government may be able to buy anything that is for sale in its own currency, but that doesn't uh, include oil or gas or uh, raw materials for industrial production or, base, or basic foodstuffs. Uh, to buy the to buy those you need U.S. dollars. Indeed, the, these days you are you. I assume that's the consumer. Need uh, dollars for, mo for most imports. Uh, now most consumers buy imports with their local currencies. Currency exchange is generally done by the local uh, importer uh, or the foreign exporter. Uh, most of global trade is conducted in U.S. dollars. Yes, that's often a uh, numerator or a numerator. The, the only country in the world that can't always buy everything the country needs is its own in its own currency and therefore uh, never needs to borrow in another currency is the United States because it, it is the sole issuer of the U.S. dollar. 
this is another way of expressing what is known as uh, it, its exorbitant privilege. This definition demonstrates ignorance of the numera, uh, numerator con concept and, need, and needs like those. Uh, there is a failure to the to distinguish between the currency of denomination and the currency of denomination uh, of uh, accumulated net financial assets. However, the dark side of this is that the U.S. is obliged to run wide uh, current account and fiscal deficits. That would be the bright side. Imports are rare, uh, are real benefits and exports are real cost. And the net is known as real terms of trade. Because global demand for the dollar for uh, far exceeds U.S. production, yes, a policy designed to support net exports at the real cost of the microeconomic, or economy, excuse me. When it attempts to close these deficits, trade deficits, global trade uh, and investments shrinks, causing market crashes and triggering recessions around the world. Sometimes there is even a recession in the U.S. itself. The U.S. last attempt to run a fiscal surplus ended in a 2001 market crash and recessions. Recession, excuse me. Um, as written, the author is presuming uh, the U.S. proactively targeted fiscal surpluses to reduce their deficits. And I should probably go back here and clarify that uh, he's actually responding to uh, Francis Coppola. There we go. <laughs> I knew I missed something there. But anyway, let's see. Let's see. Okay. Okay. There we go. Let's see. Global trade and investment shrinks, causing market crashes and triggering recessions around the world. Sometimes there is even a recession in the United States. Okay, I've already read that part. Uh, see, as written, the author is presuming the U.S. proactively targeted fiscal surpluses to reduce trade uh, trade deficits. This was not uh, the reason for the surpluses. Those were generated by tax structure along with rapidly increasing private sector deficits due to the tax by 2K and real estate man uh, manias. MMT uh, adherents uh, like to cite this as evidence of the eliminating the government deficit as or in, in, in any country will re result in recession. This is stretching things uh, considerably. But this is stretching things uh, considerably. Fred shows uh, us that even in the U uh, damn. U.S. only. Uh, U.S. only one recession in the last century has been preceded by a government surplus. Again, a gross error of logic, uh, saying that eliminating a, uh, a government deficit can result in a recession, is not to say that all recessions are caused by a government surplus. Now I'm guessing that obviously these are the the statements from uh, from from a author, from an author of a an article that Warren Moser is uh, replying to, um, and the in bulk I'm guessing these are, those are his answers. Um, again, a gross error of logic saying the eliminating eliminating a government deficit can result in recession is not to say that all recessions are caused by a government surplus. Of course, uh, of course, many developed countries do in practice pay for imports in their own currencies. Governments, banks, and corporations meet dollar funding uh, need, uh, meet dollar funding requirements by borrowing in their own currency and swapping into dollars in a financial market. This diminishes the need for dollar denominated borrowing either by government or the private sector. These countries, therefore, have a considerable degree of monetary sovereignty. Uh, I guess this is uh, his, um, the Warren Moses uh, answer. This is just a further expansion of the author's definition of uh, monetary sovereignty. But it is not uh, absolute as it, uh, as it is in the United States. It crucially uh, depends on the stability of their currency and the uh, creditworthiness other borrowers, both of which are a matter of market confidence. 
I guess this is where uh, Warren actually uh, answers, I believe. No point in continuing as the rest is continue, uh, continue to cont uh, attempt to proceed in logical progression with the um, with the same compounding breakdowns of logic. MMT is about pure force of logic as per soft currency economics, which this author, Coppola, uh, is apparently unwilling to or incapable of recognizing. Um, okay, feel free to distribute. So let's go back to the main thing here. Um, now, this is the part that I'm, I've been learning as far as the part goes and trying to understand as far as the overall economy, how money works, and where it comes from, and all of those stuff. Uh, to get back to the basics here, um, one issue, uh, issue, uh, issue its own currency exclusively, which means we. We, uh, UK, Canada, Japan, uh, China, I think also, uh, we create our own currency. We're not, we're not dependent on other countries uh, exclusively for our currency and all that stuff. And I don't think it's uh, actually uh, pegged to anything in regards to other countries' um, denomination or monetary denominations. Uh, requires all taxes and, and related obligations to be ex, uh, extinguished uh, in that currency. This is where we saw Russia. Russia has decided. Uh, Russia decided to have like all of the countries that are un unfriendly uh, to um, to open up ruble uh, uh, card uh, bank accounts, so that when they want to purchase oil, gas, whatever. And they would be paying in ruble, so that that's a whole that's a whole reason why they're able to sustain uh, that part of the war. Uh, at least that's from what I've seen, and that's what it looks like. Anyway, um, there aren't. I said from the very I said from the very beginning. Once I realized that J.P. Morgan Chase was actually uh, was actually processing um, their uh, debt payments uh, in U.S. dollars. Once they were, once I realized that they were able to do that, I knew they'd be fine because not a lot of their debt is actually in, in U.S. dollar. So a lot of their debt is actually in rubles, which we're able to pay. Anyway, so let's see. Uh, can purchase anything that is for sale in that currency at any time it chooses without financial constraints. That includes all idle labor. Uh, four, its central bank sets the interest rate. That's true. I mean, that's what the Fed does. Um, and the Fed is our, is our central bank. Um, the currency flows. In other words, when selling the currency in exchange for other currency, uh, there's a, a the the rate of the the cost of transferring or exchanging that currency is floating. It all depends on what I I guess what the uh, what the market says as far as the value of of that currency. Um, like you know, how much is how much is the trading for that sort of thing? Let's see. And the government does not borrow in any currency other than its own. Uh, yes. Do we, do we borrow as a country? Uh, yeah, but we don't borrow any other currency. We borrow from our own banking system, central bank, and that's one of the reasons why there's been that's why uh, QE's been doing uh, been going. Um, now at first. As far as uh, quantitative easing, I was thinking that, that that they were able to, uh, like give reserves to banks to make sure that things don't collapse. But that that sounds like it's one of the ways. But another way is when they purchase assets, you know, like uh, markets back securities and all other stuff, and they're able to buy those from banks and put money back and put money in the system and then every 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 purchase them uh which is repose uh repurchase them to take the money out so which means that they buy the assets then the banks rebuy the assets bring them back bring them back that for loans and stuff like that um well, they have currency on hand for the loans for it to be able to be put in inside the bank. Um, anyway, uh, if you like what you hear, please uh, uh, subscribe. Um, this will also be on my Substack, CalvinTaylor.substack.com. I just wanted to read a little bit of this part right here. Um, Anyways, I will be right back.
Hey, how's it going there? Uh, just wanted to update you guys. Um, this is, I'm, I'm bringing this back as far as uh, if you want any part of any merchandise that, I, that I've had in the past or not. Uh, don't, don't forget, you can go up to, you can go up here and order any of this. It's all premium as far as uh, quality. I have a, I have a, I had a mask somewhere around here, but I, I, I still have the, uh, I still have the, uh, the, what was it? Um, sweatshirt, or sweat jacket. One of these. This is, I still have one of these. Um, anyway, so yeah, um, check it out if you want. Uh, I have, uh, pillows apparently. And this is the pillows. Yeah, I've got pillows. Uh, three, four different colors. Um, check that out. Uh, and uh, coming up next will be the my uh my main show. Uh, stay tuned. Peace out. Uh, hello guys. Let me make sure it's not okay. Good. Well, apparently they're going to, well, namely Biden, is talking about putting more sanctions on Russia. Here's the problem with that. Their hope, well, first of all, they're, they're talking as if Russia can't pay their debt to uh, the U.S. Department of Treasury or the Fed. When, as you can see here, the J.P. Morgan Chase and company have processed funds that were earmarked for interest payments due on dollar bonds issued by the Russian government and sent the money onto Citigroup Inc. as a bondholders waiting for a second day to receive the, one, the $117 million, according to people familiar with the matter. J.P. Morgan was the correspondent bank Russia used to send the payment to Citigroup, which is acting as a payment agent on the bonds. The people said, uh, yeah, the people said, asking not to be identified, dis discussing a private matter, J.P. Morgan sent the money to Citigroup after it sought and received the required approvals from U.S. authorities on Wednesday, one of the people said. So, so basically, it seems like this war is not over, no, well, it, it's, it's, it's not, it, it's not to bankrupt Russia. Because Russia obviously has the financial capabilities of paying its bills both internationally and uh, and and uh, domestically. I I yeah, and I've seen a lot of footage of supposed dead people. Um, and I mean, granted, there could be like a few uh, in some of the areas that I've seen, um, but. When you have someone laying laying in a open um, uh, what the hell was it? Um, shoot that uh, bag for um, for the deceased open and the person uh, that supposedly has passed away uh, is fiddling with it, one of which was smoking a cigarette. Then you have footage of people in the street and a few of them uh, playing with their hands. So I don't know if, yeah, it's there's something weird going on here. I it seemed more of a distraction from something else. Uh, and I did report, uh, I think I reported a couple of days ago that uh, that Ukraine was supposed to be like the first um, first uh, country to start using, I think, exclusively CBDCs. Uh, that's uh, central bank uh, uh, currency, basically. The CBDC, uh, yeah, a central bank uh, cryptocurrency um, as a as a currency, as digital currency. So maybe that's what maybe that's what this whole thing is about, as far as that part goes. It's a distraction so that they can start that up. I don't know if that's an actual fact, but uh, or I don't know if that's the full story. I, I mean to say, but um, that seems like something they're doing as a distraction, as far as that part goes. I don't know that for a fact, obviously, but it just seems like it. But anyway, so let's see. 
Uh, representative for J.P. Morgan Institute declined to comment. European bondholders of, of Russian sovereign debt had received no sign of funds uh, as of Thursday, and S&P Global Ratings warned that the technical difficulties in getting the money to investors was increasing the risk of default. So in other words, they had the money. They found a way to get through. It's some ways, something within the financial chain is preventing it from going through. So, obviously, they are trying to make the payments. Obviously, the sanctions are uh, against, you know, the, the rich of the rich as far as the country goes, Putin and all that. But it's not, it's not like they're, they're, they're being forced to default because they don't have the money. They do have the money, obviously, to try and make the payments. I understand what sanctions are. Unfortunately, sanctions from a country that doesn't really provide the United States with much in regards to exports or imports is hurting more the general public in the U.S. than it is overseas. Uh, the fundage and, and the, the prices of the, the prices of sanctions on on the different countries is enormous as far as what we pay here. Anyway, so let's see. Uh, da, da, no sign of funds. Okay, I've already read that. But technical difficulties and just getting the money to investors will, was increasing the risk of default either this time around uh, or in the future. Okay. Uh, Russia officials have said if the payment in dollars is blocked, then it will indeed it will instead send it in rubles. Russia has a 30-day grace period to meet the payment obligations. If funds are not accessible for investors or if a payment is made uh, in a currency not st stipulated in the terms of the obligation, and we believe that the investor does not agree to the alternative payment, we could deem this a default. S&P analysis said in the statement uh, downgrading Russia's foreign currency rating in, in – okay, so in other words, they're trying to uh, – it sounds like they're, they're, they're trying to mess with the currency value. Uh, let's see, for, uh, yeah, Russian's foreign currency rating to CC from CCC. CC, uh, anyway. Uh, nonetheless, JP Morgan's move spurred an optimism that the bonds may still be sell settled in dollars, sending the country's bond prices higher around maturities. I'm oh, sorry, across maturities. <clears throat> The implied uh, probability of a default by Russia within the year in, uh, inched lower to 57, down from 59, according to a credit default swap pricing. Last week, it was as high as 80. This seems to take a technical de uh, default off the table for now. Khan Nassel Nasli, a money manager at Neuberger uh, Berman in Hague, Netherlands, However, there is still some uncertainty over corporate debt as only a number of companies have been given leeway. Yeah, so, there, so basically sanctions are going on uh, company, oil companies and hedge funders and all that other stuff. And all, those, all those other people, I mean. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, so C Group is the payment agent for about four dozen bonds tied to Russian companies, according to data compliance. Uh, com compiled by Bloomberg. Some of those companies include MMC, uh, Noralisk, uh, Nickel, PJSC, and Gazprom, uh, Gaz, yeah, Gazprom, PJC, uh, SAC, have successfully made coupon uh, payments in recent days. In other cases, uh, coupon payments may not have gone through. Citigroup this week blocked a 19.25 million interest payment sent by Eurochem Group AG, a Russian fertilizer uh, maker, according to a person familiarized with, familiar with the matter. The steel and mining company, uh, Severstal, warned this week that Citigroup uh, may refrain from processing a 12.6 million interest payment due on its dollar bonds. The uh, drama has thrust a spotlight on banks' back offices. The Russian finance minister, uh, ministry said it had sent the order for a $170 million interest payment on March 14 to a correspondent bank that it that didn't identify. 
adding that it would issue a separate comment about whether the payment agent at City Bank's London branch has received the payment. As the correspondent bank, New York-based J.P. Morgan processes and clears payments and other transactions for financial institutions. In this role as payment agent, Citigroup has based, uh, also based in New York, collect collects coupon payments from bond issuers, issuers and di- distributes those funds to investors. So yeah, it just seems like the Biden uh, is trying to to manipulate like through sanctions manipulate the uh, russian's currency uh and since a lot of countries take mostly usd for payments that's why they have to um exchange their money uh, their rubles for for us dollars because uh, that's a, because right now usd is the world's uh currency in regards to trades Let's see. Another thing I found interesting on here. Let me see if I can get to it now. Okay, so let me see. This is the same one, I think, actually. Uh, okay, so apparently Russia owes Western banks $120 billion. I guess uh, just that's not there because I just read that they are, they are actually paying them. Uh, hey, I also wanted to uh, look up and see... Um, who was basically Russia's biggest trading partner, and that would be China. China, which happens to also be, I think, one of our uh, biggest uh, traders. So we're, this country is between a rock and a hard place because China is basically like the lead exporter, as far as I know of. Um, I, and only, uh, India is next to them as far as that part goes. India uh, exports a lot of shit to uh, well to around the world. Um, so this puts is an interesting uh, part right here um, since we're all basically sovereign countries that it's, it's, it's one of those like whose dick is bigger sort of things. Um, and right now uh, China has and China has the biggest dick from what I can see. Uh, just because they export the most, they have the same type of monetary system as we do, they have the same type of monetary system as uh, as Russia does, as far as the part goes, as far as I know of anyway. Um, except they, have, as far as I know about, they have a uh, managed managed uh, exchange rate, which means that it's floating, but they manage the 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 the, the uh, exchange rate only because uh, I think it makes it easier for them to. Um, to uh trade w- with other countries uh now we ha- we have a floating exchange rate which which allows us to, to trade with anybody but that also means i think uh that is harder as far as uh, as far as china to to allow out like outside uh, corporations have a a bigger piece of their economy unlike with us obviously and uh International co- uh, corporation, uh, international investors use uh, real estate. Uh, investors basically are um, like BlackRock. I think uh, I'm not sure, I can't remember if BlackRock. One of the one of the Black Rocks or Black Stones are specifically a international uh, trading or uh, international investment uh, group. Uh, basically. Uh, Let's say buying market backed securities, and those investors uh, put their money in, into BlackRock or, Black, or Blackstone and get whatever uh, markets, mortgages or uh, uh, property securities they can get out of that. So that's effectively how a lot of the uh, billionaires, I guess you can call them investors from China, get into the US market with regards to real estate. Um, anyway. But yeah, so apparently, let's see, we are, uh, where are we at? Uh, we are like fourth. We, we're we just, we're under uh, Belarus as far as trading. So they don't, they don't, um, they don't sell us a lot of shit. I'm not sure we sell them a lot of shit either. Um, anyway. And I thought this little part was kind of interesting. I uh, found this also, uh, OEC, which I'm not really sure what that stands for, but uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, let's see. So 
This is Russia's uh, economic profile, I suppose. Uh, see, so their exports were three hundred thirty billion for twenty twenty, and imports, which means they export a lot more, uh, were uh, two hundred twenty billion. So about so what one hundred and one billion dollars um, uh, more in exports than they did in imports. Per capita was even more. Uh, they shipped out per capita 2.29 thousand compared to 100 and uh, compared to 1.3 53 thousand. Uh, I think that's uh, yeah, so basically it was let's see, in 20, 2019, 81 out of 219 uh provinces uh sent shit out, um, while only 124 out of 219 brought things in. And as far as the product exports and uh, imports, uh, 13 out of 226 uh, was was uh, was in that uh, category. And this is what I mean, by the way. And, uh, anyway, so let's see. I haven't actually looked totally at this. Let me just kind of uh, browse. Let's see. Let's see what is this? Ah, okay. Anyway, <laughs> neither here nor there. Oh, let's go to the country. Okay. Uh, ah, you know what? China, I mean, not China, but United States. Let's see. Can I get that? Let's see. Okay, there we go. All right. So let's see. Uh, we export 134 trillion. Uh, wait a minute. Is that? Yeah, probably the imports. Okay. So yeah, we buy more than we export. Uh, one out of 226, yeah, so it's 2.24 trillion compared to two out of uh, 226 for exports. Um, per capita is 4.8 thousand, so 34 out of 219. And yeah, we, we, we buy more as far as that part goes. That's why. This is, this is what I was saying months ago. Like we ex we export a lot more than we import, or we import a lot more than we export. So that's one of the reasons why everybody has to have some sort of USD um, reserve. So let's see. Yeah. Uh, Japan, Let's see if that comes up anything. It's just interesting to me. I mean, I hope you guys enjoy this. If you guys don't I understand, uh, please support this channel either way and uh, yeah, share this. But let's see what Japan ranked number one of 127. Let's see, exports 623 billion, um, imports 581 billion. Uh, see per capita, uh, 4.95 thousand uh, as far as exports, imports, 4.62. Let's see what else. Uh, service exports, 205 billion, imports, 196. So this is, uh, yeah. That, so you, I think there's two. Let's see what else. <laughs> I mean, this this kind of stuff is fun to me. Just kind of look and see who gets mo more uh, uh, exports, imports, and all that other stuff. So let's see. Uh, 330 billion in exports, 220 billion in imports, 2.29 billion in exports per capita, and 1.53 billion. Oh, no. The billions, that billion? Anyway, a uh, thousand, I suppose. I don't know what the hell. Uh, imports. Uh, I'm not that smart about this kind of stuff. Anyway. So let's see. Uh, yeah, imports. The top imports of Russia are cars, which is 7.75 billion. Vehicle parts, which is 7.28 billion. Broadcasting equipment, 7.15 billion. Packaged med uh, medicaments, okay, uh, 7.0, uh, 7.6 billion. Computers, 4.1 billion. Let's see. Russian borders, okay, so Norway, Finland, okay. Uh, let's see, top exports, uh, crude petroleum. Okay, I'm sorry, uh, I messed that up. Was, import was the 
cars and all that stuff. Exports, uh, which they that's what they send out. Uh, crude petroleum, seventy four point four billion. Uh, refined petroleum, four hundred eighty eight. Uh, oh, sorry, forty eight billion. Uh, petroleum ca- petroleum gas, nineteen point seven billion. Gold, eighteen point seven billion. And go and coal briquettes, fourteen point five billion. Let's see. I mean, this is all in 2021 estimates, of course. I don't know if they have anything as far as 2022 yet, anyway, but I just said that was kind of cool. Or kind of interesting, anyway. Now, recently, I also learned that Ukraine might do a deal with the IMF. Uh, I am hoping that doesn't actually happen uh, because IMF, they give loans out to countries uh for i believe as leases on their natural resources um but there's hefty interest on there let's see yeah so let's see yeah bilateral borrowing agreements bilateral borrowing agreements serve as a third line of defense uh after quotas and NAB, which NAB is, let's see, new arrangements to borrow, uh, yeah, new arrangements to borrow, which is basically what most uh, up and coming um, countries do in regards to that is uh, in order to get um, currency flowing, they'll, you know, whatever re- natural resources uh, they have. And if, the, if they go to IMF and are interested in doing that, they'll do a new arrangement and borrow essentially usd money so they'll be they'll be using usd instead of their own currency um but they'll be they'll have to use the currency to purchase uh uh usd bonds in order to be able to put you know in order to be able to buy uh uh u.s currency in order to pay off the interest and all that stuff so it, Basically, is what you would call a uh, international version of uh, oh, what do you call that? Uh, predatory loaning. That's what IMF basically is. is a predatory is a, is a pred, predator uh, in loaning as far as that part goes. Okay, so let's see. Uh, and I wanted to kind of go back, but see what I was kind of confused with CDR was next. I remember reading a while back, but I remember what it was. So let's see. Apparently, it's uh, special draw rights or SDR or. or are an artificial currency instrument created by IMF, which uses them for in, uh, for, in, uh, for inter- internal accounting purposes. The value of the SDR is calculated from a weighted basket of major currencies, including the U.S. dollar, the euro, J- Jap- Japanese yen, Chinese yuan, and British pound. The SDR interest rates or interest rate provides the basic for calculating the interest rate charged to member countries when they're uh, remun- remunerated uh, creditor position in the IMF. So in other words, if you do one or whatever else, I assume you can imagine that, you know, whatever, uh, whatever sales are done within the country. My point being is they loan financing to a country and the country has to pay them back with interest in the, uh, is laid out. Anyway, I think the, the whole thing is fucked up. I think that. The, that country should be able to establish their own central bank. It should be able to uh, do trading amongst themselves with other countries. I mean, I mean, if, yeah, it's just, it's just one of those things where the to me they're taking they'd be taking away independence as far as that part goes, and that I guess you can say would be causing the actual inflation as far as that part goes. What the conservatives always bitch about. Because that's effectively what what they're doing is they're loaning out whatever currency that is, and yeah, like it, like expanding the, the expanding the uh, the what do you call that uh, the, the the currency, the um, monetary balance or whatever the fuck you say it. Anyways, my point being is the fact that no country should do this. Establish your own currency, establish your own central bank, establish, you know, the sovereignty of that, make sure you have enough natural resources to be able to trade on your open market at fair market value. That's how you should do it. Anyways, uh, but I wanted to 
talk that way and if you guys uh enjoyed this i hope you uh do decide to uh subscribe to this channel uh, this will also be on my sub stack so if you want to listen to it while doing something else uh you can go on to calvintaylor.substack.com and either you could be a paid subscriber or you could be a free subscriber up to you i uh, wouldn't mind if someone actually paid for it but uh as long as you subscribe is all good with me anyway uh thanks for listening thanks for watching i hope a lot of us it made sense i hope that it clears a few things if you're unclear of a few things uh but it was fun for me as far as uh, finding out the uh the the actual amount of exports and imports from places like china japan russia us you know that sort of thing Anyways, uh, thanks for listening, watching, uh, subscribe, and peace out for now.